The following articles contain content of an adult nature. Do not proceed if you are not over the age of 18 or are not willing to listen to such content. SCP-5832 Stained Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures A Foundation Front Company has purchased the building containing SCP-5832 and falsely classified it as condemned to discourage trespassing. A single guard is to be stationed on location to ensure security. The entrance to SCP-5832 is to be monitored via remote surveillance. Description SCP-5832 is an apartment consisting of a hallway with two opposing rooms at, e at its ends. Those who enter the area are entirely unable to vocalize. Other deliberately generated forms of noise like clapping or playing an instrument are possible, and other sounds are not affected. Evidence suggests that the anomaly was at one time inhabited, though the apartment seems to not have been entered for at least two years. A small metal placard under the apartment number reads, Department of Abnormalities. The leftmost room appears to be a child's bedroom painted pink. The paint has no anomalous properties, but contains dangerous amounts of lead and has peeled heavily. The contents of the leftmost room are listed below. A 16-pack of Crayola crowns and a Disney princess activity book. All images of Prince Adam from Beauty and the Beast have been colored over and scratched out in red. The red crown has not otherwise been used. A Webkins plush black Labrador Retriever. In several places, fur is crusted over with an unidentified substance. A Nintendo DS and a cartridge for Animal Crossing Wild World. The game was functional in all aspects, save that when an NPC was engaged in conversation, no dialogue would appear in the resulting bubble. The player character's personal commentary on achievements or actions was also missing. Other text was not affected. Based on the presence of certain time-locked features in the game, it had been played continuously for at least nine months. A white wooden dresser. Contents of the dresser include a charm bracelet with one attached charm resembling a birthday cake with seven candles. Also found inside was several opened and partly emptied packages of pull-ups disposable training pants and three identical Disney princess t-shirts in a child's medium size. All three t-shirts are heavily stained. The rightmost room is a small bathroom with linoleum flooring. It contains a pink toothbrush and a tube of Crest children's toothpaste, as well as a, lar a plastic booster stool under the toilet seat. No toilet paper or other hygiene products are present. There is a large crack in the bathtub sealant. The sink and bathtub faucet are functional and non-anomalous. Water samples taken from the toilet reveal trace amounts of amniotic fluid. These traces persist despite multiple flushes. A plastic cup sits on the bathroom counter. The contents have congealed, but chemical analysis revealed it to be a mixture of apple juice and mifepristroni, also known as RU486. SCP-231 Special Personnel Requirements Item Number SCP-231-7 See Addendum RE SCP-231-1 through SCP-231-6 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures You came here looking for secret messages, didn't you? It grabs on to you, doesn't it? The fascination, the intrigue, the mystery. You keep searching for answers. You're looking in the wrong place. Seven seals, seven rings, seven brides for the Scarlet King. They gather around the natal bed, the foolish and the wise. They fear the child yet to be born, whose voice shall rend the skies. The faithful watch the forest for the coming of the king. Their lanterns bright, they wait at night for the new world he will bring. Sight and personal requirements. Under special order of O5 Viaf, the following addendum is attached to the beginning of the file for SCP-231-7. 
The dragon waits in shadows. His breath will scorch the land. The hero in the castle draws his sword and makes his stand. Personnel assigned to SCP-231-7 must rotate out for one month for psychological counseling after two months on site. SCP-231-7 is to be kept at an undisclosed location. All personnel assigned to SCP-231 will be transported there blindfolded from Site-19 by route including no fewer than seven different forms of transportation, including, but not limited to, aircraft, automobile, underground tunnel, and removal of the blindfold during the transport process is grounds for immediate termination. The princess in the tower is hidden far away, but nothing under heaven can keep the groom at bay. Personnel assigned to SCP-231-7 must undergo heavy psychological testing before being cleared to enter the site. Individuals must score at least 72 points on the Milgram Obedience Examination, be unmarried, have no offspring, and express nothing less than total loyalty to the Foundation. Normal psychological screening procedures against Axis II disorders are waived, so long as the D-Class personnel in question has the mental capacity to carry out Procedure 110 Montauk as needed. Luke 2334 Personnel who express sympathy towards SCP-231-7's plight and or express a desire to rescue or sympathize towards SCP-231-7 will be transferred to another project without delay. Any actual rescue attempts will be met with immediate termination. Personnel who have served on the staff of SCP-231-7's containment team are not required to divulge that information to others. No official record shall be kept of the names of any staff assigned to SCP-231-7, nor will said service appear in personnel files of said staff. They gather round with leering smiles, the soulless and the dead. Though her soul unwinds, the cruelest minds will keep her in her bed. While on site, individuals assigned to SCP-231-7 will be issued concealing helmets with integrated voice changers to protect their identity. On-site staff are not to remove said uniforms in the presence of other staff members. Off-duty hours are to be spent in private quarters alone. Six D-Class personnel are to be assigned to SCP-231-7 each month for the purpose of carrying out Procedure 110 Montauk. Violent criminals are not to be used for this purpose due to the possibility of accidental fatality during the 110 Montauk process. Special Containment Procedures Following in repeated escape and suicide attempts and based on the failure of containment of SCP-231-1 through 6, containment of SCP-231-7 has been amended to the following. SCP-231 is to be contained with a soundproof holding cell adjacent to holding cells for 6 D-Class personnel assigned for the purposes of Procedure 110 Montauk. Cameras will monitor every inch of the cell at all times and must be manned 24 hours a day. Malfunctioning monitoring equipment will be replaced without delay by psychologically screened staff. Doors will be magnetically locked, openable by positive action by the control and monitoring facility. This includes all doors linking the main holding cell to those of the six D-Class personnel. SCP-231-7 is to be kept restrained to a hospital bed at all times, except for the purposes of Procedure 110 Montauk. Hydration will be provided through IV drip. Feeding will be carried out twice per day through feeding tube by approved medical personnel who have not taken the Hippocratic Oath. Under no circumstances are narcotics, anesthesia, or other unapproved medications to be administered to SCP-231-7. The potter told his apprentice to prepare him seven jars. Six he made with grace and skill. The last his hands did mar. Procedure 110 Montauk is to be carried out at least once every 24 hours by Class D personnel. During Procedure 110 Montauk, at least one security clearance for 231 staff member 
must monitor the procedure by camera at all times. Although the sound may be turned off if the vocalizations of SCP-231-7 become too distressing. Following the procedure, all D-Class personnel must return to their holding cells or explosive collars will be detonated. The Cretan moon no more is howling, gone its morning black. In their dreams its face is prowling, come to take them back. Data expunged per order of 5 Fiaf on redacted date. Information moved to eyes only document 231-110 Montauk. Access to 231-110 Montauk is limited to personnel with security clearance for 231. Description. SCP-231 is a female between 12 and 10 years of age with data expunged. The king is in his courting clothes. The brides are in their beds. The unborn princes wait in sleep to raise their eager heads. SCP-231-1 through 7 were retrieved from following a police raid on a warehouse owned by an organization called the Children of the Scarlet King. See article on redacted date in the newspaper. Police raid Satanic Sex Cult Save 7, 24 hours after rescue, SCP-231, real name, went into labor pains, giving birth three minutes later to SCP causing an event, resulting in over confirmed casualties. Foundation personnel immediately took possession of, of remaining SCPs 231 2 through 231 7, and based on notebooks recovered from the cult, instituted Procedure 110 Montauk to prevent f future occurrences. The hens were in the hen house, and seven eggs did lay, till the fox crept in by the dark of night and stole the eggs away. Current status of SCP-231 units. Six were broken by their bindings, six no more shall sing. Come the seventh full on winding, and all the bells will ring. SCP-231, deceased as of redacted date. Killed during initial recovery operations while giving birth to SCP. See casualty report for event 231 alpha for more details. When the first had given birth, then all the birds did sing. Her screaming cries did shake the skies as she called out for her king. SCP-231-2. Killed during attempt to remove fetus of second SCP specimen, resulting in immediate Noisier event. See casualty report for event 231 Bravo for more details. By Doctor's Blade, the second bade a life into the world. Untimely hewn neath a silent moon, the king's red flag unfurled. SCP-231-3, deceased on redacted date. Self-terminated following a prolonged period of distress caused by implementation of Procedure 110 Montauk. SCP immediately underwent a exact event. The casualty report for event 231 Charlie for more details. His bride the third remained unheard, her cries for help ignored. She stopped her life with the surgeon's knife and gave it to our lord. SCP 231 4 deceased on redacted date. Attempt to administer SCP 500. Although successful in that all traces of SCP are expelled from the system, expelled remains immediately underwent a event, causing numerous casualties, including SCP-231-4 herself. The casualty report for event 231 Delta for more details. The fourth prepares a dagger and places it at her heart. The perfect cure cannot make pure what the king has set apart. SCP-231-5, deceased on redacted date. Botched application of Procedure 110 Montauk resulted in SCP-231-5 
giving birth to SCP-8 one hour later, which underwent a narrow event. See casualty report for event 231-ECHO and report on destruction of site 231 ELIF for more details. Recruitment profile of Class D personnel was revised to minimize possibility of second botched procedure 110 Montauk. The fifth one's crown was bearing down upon the fox's set. The den was sundered with mighty thunder and apocalypse beget. SCP-231-6, deceased as of redacted date. Killed during escaped attempt aided and abetted by Thames. Thames, who had been exhibiting heightened stress levels due to prolonged exposure to SCP-231, obtained possession of SCP Redacted, an attempt to use said weapon to rescue SCP-231-6 and 231-7. Agent Thames was killed in the resulting firefight, but a stray round resulted in the termination of SCP-231-6. Fetus of SCP-231-6 SCP then underwent an event. In the wake of this incident, O5 level personnel voted by unanimous decision to amend personnel policies. See casualty report for event 231 Foxtrot for more details. On the sixth day, the walls gave way, and the oceans turned to ash. Her birth gave work as the earth shook underneath the king's fell lash. SCP-231-7 As of present, SCP-231-7 is successfully contained at site Gosnom. Seventh bride will break the tides, the moon no more will shine. There comes a day not far away shall birth the death of time. Addendum 231-B Text of missive by o 5 f Dear friends, it has come to my attention that recently certain rumors regarding SCP-231, due to the drop in staff morale, I have decided to address some of the more prevalent points. Yes, Procedure 110 Montauk is as horrible as you have heard, which is why only Class D personnel are authorized to carry it out. Yes, it does involve brutal redacted. No, assignment to SCP-231 is not intended to test your loyalty to the Foundation, your tendencies towards her or anything else. No, SCP-231 is not a punishment detail. Yes, there are staff who have been on SCP-231 and have successfully transferred out by their own request. No, not everyone who's worked on SCP-231 is terminated upon leaving the project. Yes, staff members who have been assigned to 231 are allowed to take a Class A amnesiac before leaving the project if so desired. Yes, false memories are then implanted. No, none of the supposed methods of recovering or detecting false memories work. Yes, there are some of you who've worked on SCP-231 and don't remember it. No, we have not given up trying to save SCP-231-7 but research in that field must be carried out with the utmost of caution based on the increased potency of each subsequent event associated with each SCP specimen. There is a strong possibility that SCP-231-7's event could result in an XK class end of the world scenario. This information is corroborated in notebooks recovered from the cultists See document Seven Brides, Seven S Seals. No, putting the poor girl out of her misery is not an option. Neither is drugging her. She has to be aware of what is going on for 110 Montauk to work. One final note. The Foundation does many distasteful things in the completion of our mission, but our mission is important enough that the price is one we must pay. Containment of SCP-231 is one of our most dangerous duties, not because of any direct danger to ourselves, like SCP-682, but because of the danger that if our resolve will fail, that we allow ourselves to either let down our guard due to sympathy for the suffering of an innocent, 
or that we will allow ourselves to become monsters through the performance of monstrous acts. Just do your jobs and say the philosophizing for the shrink. Sincerely, O5 Fiaf. Don't believe it when they say they're trying to save her. Why would they bother? They've got exactly what they want, exactly where they want it. Addendum 231-C Procedure Update 231-7's emotional response to Procedure 110 Montauk appears to be reduced recently. Despite proper execution of said procedure, increasing danger of SCP undergoing a shield of event. Two options have been proposed. Development of a new containment procedure with higher emotional response than Procedure 110 Montauk, or administration of a Class C amnestic to SCP-231-7, allowing for a return to base emotional response state. Said memory modification is to be administered during execution of Procedure 110 Montauk to maintain heightened emotional state following a memory reset. Please advise. The doctor never tells his god which one he really seeks. Instead, he hides himself away and quietly he weeps. Decision. Proverbs 132. Carry out option two at the first available opportunity. Their god's own voice, he makes the choice, declaring with their word. In fear and pain, let her remain, lest she be like the third. Aftermath. Ezekiel 6.14. Option 2 was carried out. SCP-231-7's emotional state has returned to 100% eff efficacy. Dr. Wu subsequently committed suicide due to heightened emotional stress. We'll continue analysis of efficacy of treatment. Doctor's gun ended his run as he put it to his ear. As she was defiled, the pitied child, he gave it to his fear. Doctor uh, no. Addendum 231-F Continued Analysis of Efficacy of Treatment Revelation 1821-24 through 24. After some analysis, I have determined that it is not necessary to perform memory modification every time Procedure 110 Montauk is carried out. In fact, it is better to delay some time before readministering the agent. Analysis of SCP 231 7's emotional response indicates that efficacy of Procedure 110 Montauk seems to peak between third and fourth performance of the procedure. The dread of anticipation of events seems to heighten emotional response for a time before familiarity with the procedure begins to lessen the efficacy of treatment. My recommendation is that Class A amnestics be administered once a week during Procedure 110 Montauk. The calendar has been modified accordingly. Her memory, a fickle thing. The strongest shall endure. When her weeping starts to waver, their drugs make her mind pure. The tickle monster will rise.